Okay, guys. Well, welcome back again. We are in the last episode of this Q&A uh, with FKK. Uh, I think we have a great experience with some of the college coaches. Uh, they have joined our Q&A. And then today we wanted to kind of finish this um, project by giving you guys uh, what FKK offers and uh, finishing up pretty much giving you guys our product and what we do for, for our kids. So first, I want to introduce my guests. Uh, tonight, I have Juan Uribe with us, which is a co um, college coach at ASA and also part of our staff. Uh, Joe Avalon, which is our uh, uh, director of soccer here at FKK. Hugh Mance is our executive director. Uh, Ray Sandwich, another staff coach with a lot of experience. I'm Mark Hansen, um, with a lot of experience as well, uh, director of ECNL for our program. Um, and they have a ton of experience here. So I feel this little because I know that they'll be able to uh, bounce ideas to our membership and answer some questions that you guys send me. So <coughs> let's start with the first one. Um, what is the structure for the recruiting or for, from us, from FKK, um, that we provide for the boys program? So let's start with the boys program for a minute. Um, Joe, why don't, why don't we start with you and explaining kind of what is the boys program does for the recruiting process for those kids that want to play in college? Okay. Well, it's a team approach. Number one, Jimmy, um, the structure really is all the coaches on this call right now. And frankly, even other coaches in our club, because that's our mentality is all to work together for the betterment of our kids. Uh, but really we start about their junior year. Uh, I, let me just back up. Actually, we start a lot sooner than that. We start talking about the academic piece and we tell them to get a good start their ninth grade year. It's very difficult to make up grades. So a big part of the recruiting for the boys and girls is academic. So the first thing we do stress when they get into our program is the academic piece. So going into ninth grade, very important that they start off well and start with their academic side and getting good grades because that's gonna be a big part of it. Uh, and then frankly from that, we're always monitoring their grades uh, during the evaluation process that we do. We do two evaluations with our players every year. We always talk about the academic side all the way through. And we start building a mentality towards playing collegiate soccer, okay? We started early, okay? The mentality is to build, to build it early, okay? Everything we do is around that mentality of what it takes to play collegiate soccer. Uh, and then, frankly, junior year, we start meeting with the players. We start formulating a list. We start breaking that list down. And then we start get putting them in our platforms to be seen and communicating with coaches. For the boys, it's a bit later. I know Mark and Hugh and all of us will talk about the girls' side later, uh, but that's really our structure. Coach Ray, will you give me a little bit of input about that? I know you've been very involved with this last group um, that is actually coming out. So uh, can you give me a little bit of input about um, the program and what FKK offers to, to those players? Yeah, one of the important aspects that we do, like Joe said, we all work together in this. Uh, a lot of us have been around, like me, Joe, you know, we have a lot of more, we have a lot of contacts that, uh, you know, because we've been coaching for a long time, uh, a lot of the points that Joe hit up on are very, very important from the standpoint of getting our players prepared to play uh, in college. That's what they choose to do. It's 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 a process that goes on. It, it's it's hard. You know, we try to explain how it works, and you know, try to match up schools, the players, and their their what they want to do in their lives, along with them trying to play as well. Um, and it's important aspects of what we try to make sure all of us together put try to put our players in the proper environment that's going to be help them be successful going forward in life in school. So is this not we make sure we talk with them about, hey, is this not about soccer? Uh, it's got to be also a combination of your education. How, again, we go to a lot of these events. We have people calling us. Uh, but we have to do a lot of work in behind the scenes of making calls on behalf of the players. It's time consuming, but we really enjoy it. We feel like that's a, something that our club probably does better than every other club out there. As we help kids move on to the next level. So, fantastic for everybody's time. Uh, Mark, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the girls program? I know it's different because obviously in the girls side, the process is a little early. So can you talk to us about the structure and what the plans are and, and within the club? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> the biggest thing, like everyone 
to this point is that it's a collective effort. Um, we try to meet with them early on in their freshman year and try to establish that the academics is the most important part. Um, <clears throat> you know, we do a really good job of hitting every level uh, with regards to meeting with those kids and spelling out that path. Um, on the girls' side, recruiting is earlier, uh, but they've also put in some new recruiting roles that has kind of slowed down the recruiting process, what we've seen in the last year or so. Um, so it's not quite as slow as the boys process. Um, there's still kids being recruited pretty early, but um, it's definitely slowing down where you're not seeing eighth and ninth graders make decisions that they're not ready to from a maturity standpoint. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing that we do. I mean, uh, when we do our evaluations and we sit down with the families, we talk about making sure that they look at all the aspects. Um, you know, all of us on this call are familiar with the coaching staffs and the universities and playing styles of the coaches. And sometimes, even though it's a very good player, they may not be a fit for a specific style or a specific coach. Um, and so we try to help those, you know, narrow down that process and looking at what fits for them as we go forward. So uh, Juan, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the, um, obviously the, the second level teams, not only the ACNL teams that get recruiting with our program. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Like, you know, what has been your experience with the club? Um, how is the structure with those second teams, third teams, four teams that are, are continuing to try to look to be recruited? So as of right now, well, first of all, I, I work very close with you and with Mark in regards to trying to prepare the kids to, one mentally know that they're capable of playing at the next level um we created a, a a trip that we tried to make um where the kids are going to um like for example this year we went to georgia and we played um two college teams um that kind of gives the kids the opportunity to see that they're capable of playing even if they're on the second or third teams um or even you know some of the fourth team players that came and guest played on that trip um, gives them the ability to actually think that, hey, even though I'm on the third or fourth team, I do have the ability and I do get the opportunity to make the decision, an educated decision, if I want to play in college or not. Um, and with those teams, we just create the environment, try to create the environment as much as we can, um, try to replicate um, what we do in the college game into our lower teams. So there it's not a complete shock when they do um go on these college visits um and they get to potentially train with the teams um and they they seem to be a right fit and then they can make those decisions okay uh hugh this question was actually directed to you so what does the club offer for a um, player that wants to play at the next level um obviously across the board ecnl npl now ecnr uh, the third team and the fourth team. What was the club offers for them? Well, obviously, um, you know, we 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 try to be a club that's that's comprehensive to our skill level, which is important to us. We feel that everybody that comes through the door, we have a program for them, so that's important for us. Um, the biggest thing that we offer, obviously, is the college support system that we have in place. Um, we're talking about obviously different levels of leagues, the ECNL level. Now we are, we're a part of the ECNLR, which is going to have another um, big showcase to to showcase our players. And then the you know, and obviously the biggest thing that we have is our college ID camps that we have, and I think that's that's been well attended. The boys was a, a complete surprise. Um, Joey and Ray did a real good job of getting numbers in. Um, we had close to 80 something plus boys uh, at that camp with some great coaches there. So the word's getting out that, you know, our, our program is a pretty more comprehensive program in both genders. Um, and yes, we bring in different level coaches at those ID camps um, that we have um, from junior college, NAIA, and then the division, the NCAA division, division schools. So, so we do try to, we do try to go across the board based on their skill level and try to place them in the right, the right areas that they need to go. And, and that's the biggest thing, you know, and I think we get to that point a little earlier than a lot of clubs, but we try to direct them in an area earlier 
Um, obviously, kids do develop, and as they go along, and if we feel they're developing even more so than what we think, then we try to, you know, reevaluate them and say, hey, maybe you need to look at a Division two or a lower Division one school. So, so we do provide a lot of support for them through the through the system, and obviously, there's, you know, between Ray, Joe, myself, and Mark, and you, and everybody, we're looking at about a century amount of years of this business, you know, and, and um, you know, we've had, we have coaches that have played for us or coaching in college. So, you know, that's, that's something that's um, as resurrect what we've done. And, you know, we get, we get coaches calling us about players outside of our club. So that's the reputation that we have. And uh, we try to maintain that. And that's the biggest thing for us. We we're honest about our kids and we're honest to our kids and we're honest about them to coaches. And when they come out, um, they trust our opinion on things. So, so that's why we have quite a bit of people that show up to our games. Um, because if kids are, are right into certain schools, they know that they, these kids are able to play at their schools. So let's talk about specific for numbers. Um, let's start with the boys first. Coach Ray, can you kind of give me an idea of the last, um, this, this last class that we just finished? <coughs> 2020. I know some of them are in process as, as well, but can you give me a specific <coughs> numbers, please? Uh, yeah, we, we had a tremendous year for, from the standpoint of having players who, A, wanted to go on and continue playing in college as well, uh, as, as well as placing them. Uh, we, we've, I, I'm pretty sure we're eight, nine, or ten that officially have, or, or, that are, have already made commitments to go on to schools, which that's been tremendous. We, we've been growing this boy side each year, each year, each year, and um, you know we're starting to get reap the rewards of all the time we spend in with these kids, training them at the lower levels, all the way through till they get up to their senior years and senior years. So uh, we had great success this year. Uh, it's gonna be, like I said, nine or ten committed. We've probably got another two or three. Uh, fortunately, the coronavirus has not been kind to them. Um, to finalize up some of their decisions. And, but we're still working in, in, in contact with coaches for them. So, um, and we had, we had, obviously we had seven, six or seven off the East, at ECML team, the MPL team had a couple, and there's either, uh, there's only either the next couple levels down, also produced some players who could go on and play in college. So um, I, I, I'm extremely proud of the effort that all of us put in and the club to develop, take the time and develop the players. It's been very, very uh, satisfying as a coach to see these young guys come along and, and, and then continue to want to play. Uh, that's fantastic for me. Uh, Mark, can you give us the specifics on the girls' side, please? Yeah, we've, uh, it, depending on the level, um, in total, we're about at 42 to 43 kids total um, that are going on to play. Um, and so that's a testament. Obviously, you know, we don't have 42 players on just the ECNL level um, or just on the ECNL and then that second level. So obviously that's a testament to the things that you do, Jimmy and Juan and Tibor and all the other coaches on our staff um, to really help those coaches find the right fit. Um, and we have kids going to all over the country, um, Division One, Division Two. Division three, NAIA, junior college. Um, so we're, we really try to find the right fit for the kid, um, depending on what they need. Okay. Uh, the next one's for you, Hugh. Uh, apparently a couple of people just wanted to ask you the question, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, why is it important for a player to join the club early um, to be part of our development program and obviously play at the next level? Yeah, well, I, and, and that's a very good question, um, whoever sent that in. Um, you know, because we tend to, because we do such a good job, we tend to get kids a little too late. Um, you know, because when we, then they come in and we're not, we're not saying that the other clubs are doing something bad or whatever. It just seems like they're, they're coming in to us and then we have to reteach some things that we feel that they need to get to go to the next level. Um, and, and it's sometimes you need time to do that because the, the, the biggest thing, the personality trait for them to want to go play in college, you know, that's something that needs to be a character shift. So that has to change and that takes time to change an individual on a, on a personality trait. 
Um, and then obviously the, the soccer aspects of things. Um, you know, we got some good athletes and they come to us a little late. So the better off for them to come in early, you become part of our program, become part of the system. You know, we have the SSP aspects of things, which they go and lift weights and so forth, or they do speed and agility on the fields. That's something that's huge in the college level that, you know, a lot of these kids come here and they can't, have never done that in their club. So, you know, it's just basically a coach trying to do everything for that particular team where we have specialized people that go into those parts and areas of their development. So, so the, the earlier you come to our club, the better off you are, the better acclimated you are. Uh, you know, we've had pretty good success of our kids moving on to the next level. And, um, you know, and obviously, you know, after listening to Erin talk the other day, oh, the transition of her going into ECU was very, was very good because of what we've done, um, you know, with her. And, um, and, you know, she was, she was able to cope. She had, a, she had a rough freshman year that she had to deal with. And that's the, the, the part that's the transition and from being mom to having no mom. And that, that, that always happens. But, you know, from a soccer standpoint, um, she was fine. She was, she was fine on that front, frontier. She just had to grow up as a kid. And that's, that's something that, you know, she talked about how the club has been such a huge asset in helping her get to that point. True. <coughs> All right, so we have a few questions that I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to pick randomly so that way you guys can answer those questions. So let's start with Joe. Uh, does the college level matter for a player? Does the college level matter? Well, the college academic level certainly matters. So we, again, try to match up the academic side, which is the most important thing for us as a club. Uh, but the level of play, obviously, you know, the question we ask center around you know, do they want a big school, small school, urban school? I mean, do they want a football program? Uh, there's a whole list of questions that Hugh and Mark and I go through with them through the process. Obviously, Juan and, and, um, and Ray and Mark, you know, we, we all do the same thing. So the level really doesn't matter, frankly. I mean, it's just about the academic side uh, for me. It's just trying to match up the academic side with the level of play. Juan, how about, um, how do you match a player with the college program? Especially like, obviously, you know, the <coughs> second level teams, third level teams, how do you do to match that program to make sure that, that player fits on that program? Most important thing that I try to instill in the players is to make sure that the school fits them, most importantly, academically. So in all honesty, there's, most of these kids are gonna go to four year school, or a two-year school, and then that's as far as they're going to go with their um, playing time. So I just try to get them prepped and say, hey, this needs to be a place where you feel comfortable, that you're going to be away from mom and dad, that you're going to be able to spend four years of your life here. If it doesn't feel right, it shouldn't be right. Um, and soccer program, um, the kids kind of figure that kind of out on their own when they see the team or they get to train with the team, um, with those lower level teams, um, because they're a little bit more susceptible to let them train and they can see that they can hang, like I said earlier. If they can, they can play with them. They're confident enough in the, in the process that we've done, um, yourself or myself or anybody else has been training with the club, um, where they're going to be confident enough where – Whatever program they go to, they're going to be able to say <coughs> uh, Mark, how important are the academics for the recruiting process? I think that's something that we need to focus on. Yeah, I think the <coughs> academics is a massive part to the recruiting process. Um, it's, it's very easy to have doors open um, when your academics are good. And so, you know, Hugh talked about when we have those showcase events and those college coaches come up, well, the very first thing that a majority of those coaches are going to look at is how those students do in school. Um, and their GPA and their test scores matter. Um, and so when they're a freshman, you know, they may not think one class matters, but when they're now a junior and they're being recruited, every class matters. And so I think that's where, you know, Hugh mentioned the importance of people getting with our organization early because we put a massive emphasis at a very young age on their academics. Um, 
and, and the importance of that aspect. So I think the academics is always going to be the driving force in these discussions. Um, soccer is a part of the process, but academics is always going to be the very first thing that we discuss with those players as we try to find the right fit. Coach Ray, could you give us um, an information about the financial portion of it? How important it is for the recruiting process? Well, it's extremely important for all aspects, for the players, for the parents. It's, you know, resources for the most part are not unlimited. So it's important to match up, you know, players with colleges uh, and, and along with here's Mark, Marcus that he's saying about academics. Uh, it, it's not like football and basketball where there's a lot of full rides for every player out there. Um, on the boys' side, most of the programs have 25 to 28 players. The max amount, the maximum amount of scholarships is 9.9. So you can see they're not going to There's not going to be many full rides, and that's not every program has 9.9. That's just the maximum. Uh, I know on the women's side they have more scholarships. They probably have the same amount of players, but they have a few more scholarships available. But still, very few players are getting full rides. In other words, having to pay for 100%. So the next part comes in, obviously, the academics, so that they can hopefully find some money inside that college or university to help them along with those uh, athletic dollars. Uh, and obviously, you have financial aid. And then parents have to pay money out of their own park pockets. So the financial part becomes extremely important uh, uh, for all, for all, and you have to understand where everybody is. Um, like I try to tell everybody, it's because every college it costs a lot of, there's difference from low to high. There, there's a, a big difference in what every college or university costs. <laughs> so I always everybody, it's not how much they're giving you. That, that's not the point. The, the, usually it's how much are you going to have to pay? And is that within A, your budget, and, and also matching that up with the academic aspirations that you have? Okay, that's a great answer. I think that's, that's important to know because there's obvious, obviously a cost of living that is not attached to those scholarships that they offer. And we have to take that in consideration. Um, Hugh, when we talk about trust, what, give me your opinion about the trust that the player has versus the, pro, the process that we give them. Um, that process, the coaching staff, the, the information that they give us, the ID camps, trusting that our process is good. Like, can you give me a, your opinion about that trust? Well, you just got to look at our, our records going through. I mean, what we've done in the past. Uh, we've placed a lot of kids into different schools, different levels. And, um, you know, some of them have been successful, um, you know. And so, you know, it, it's it's... It's not. It's, it's a matter of trust. There's no doubt. But just look at our track record and what we've done in the last, um, you know, six, seven years that we've been in existence. So you know, so we've done a fairly good job. Um, you know, as kids, again, it it gets back to how soon you come into our club. You start to believe in our in what we're doing. You believe in our staff. You believe in our philosophy, and you start creating trust through all that aspects of it. So. The, the sooner they get into our club, they develop that trust and they realize that what we're doing is the right way. The, the pathway is, um, is pretty laid out for them. And, and again, it's, it's, it's up to the club. There's no doubt, but most of the percentage falls back at the player. So the academic component is important. So, so we create that pathway for them. We're honest with them early. So hopefully they can create the trust early in the process. And then once that time comes for them to make a decision, they feel, you know, in their heart, that's the right decision, just based on the experience and the information they're getting from us as a club. Um, one more for, for, for Hugh, and then obviously I'm going to pick your brains on the last question, guys. Uh, Hugh, um, one of the questions was, what kind of upgrades are we doing in our coaching staff, in our structure to try to help more kids to go to, to, go to college? Obviously, you know, from the year prior to last year to now the year coming up. Um, I know that we're, we're, we hire more people, you know, and the staff, we, we do more events. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, the upgrades that we have done from the past to now, to where we're sitting now, which I believe um, this year, like um, early in the, in the Q&A, Joe said, we, we kind of breaking records now on, on the amount of kids that are going. So uh, can you talk a little bit about the upgrades that we're getting? Uh, well, you know, obviously, with the, 
you know, the landscape of soccer has changed. So the ECL now, you now is is the top platform, and we're we're pretty proud of that to be part of that. So so the landscape has upgraded us. You know, that's a dramatic upgrade of what we've been doing. Um, obviously we add in staff. You know, and 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 it's not just we're not focusing just on the top teams. We're also focusing on the lower teams also because we feel like because of the success we've been having of of sending um our you know our, our second third fourth team players to to college, we feel we have to be upgraded on every level, and um you know so so I think the the platform has done it for for ourselves um the 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 landscape have changed and it puts the ECNL up in the forefront right now as the top league in the country. Um, so we know that the the the, um, the exposure is going to be there for them, and then, you know, and obviously we've added um, Eddie Quintana is coming on the girls' side to give us some more, some more push on the on the on the girls' side to help us through that process, and alleviate some of the the release some of the the, the stress on on some of these other coaches. Um, Eddie has a huge amount of experience, and you know he's a, he's a fantastic coach, and we feel like he's going to be a huge. Um, in addition to what we have on the boys side you know we've we we feel like um we've not we've we've not touched the surface we have the people in place i think like like um ray was saying that we've we've kind of drew the line early on the age groups that we want to really start focusing on and now they're seniors now and um and um, that's what's happening right now a lot of those kids are seniors now so the system now is the system has really upgraded us. What we've done in the past, what the the structure that we put in place, and it's 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 not a one year thing and it's not a two year thing. It's been a it's been a five six year growth thing that we've we've we've, we've put in place since then, and now it's coming to fruition. Yeah, I definitely testify that on the boys' side, we've we've been doing a fantastic job, and I know uh, you guys continue to grow that. So let's go with the last question, and the last question is pretty much a tip, what tip would you give us to our membership that are going through the process or they're starting to the, to this process? Um, let's start with one. Um, the main thing is to put the work in. Put the work in, trust in what we have to offer. Um, there's a method to the madness um, and just, just a method to the process, <coughs> everything that we're doing. Um, there's, there's purpose to our training sessions. There's purpose to us being so open and honest with our kids <coughs> and where they're looking to go to and where they shouldn't be looking to go to. Um, and the biggest thing is believe because every one of our staff, from our youngest to our oldest teams, we care about where our kids are going and what they're doing. Joey? Yeah, uh, I'll just say this. Uh, Every college game, for the most part, is live streamed. So I, I, I'd say to our players, watch games. Before you tell me you want to go to this specific school, have you seen that school play? Do you know their style of play? So just, just do, you know, continue to educate yourself. Start early, okay, um, and just educate yourself. Mark? Yeah, I think the one thing I would say is make sure you look at all, all the aspects of selecting a college. When you make those lists and you start to look at the process, don't just think about the soccer programs. Look at the academics. Look at where the school's located. And then ultimately that last piece is the financial piece that Ray spoke about um, in a great deal of length and had some really good points on. Uh, because the reality is if you make a decision solely on one of those aspects, there's a possibility that you may not be happy when you go. And for us, um, the goal of every coach and every person in our club is that we help you find the right fit um, for four years, not just for one semester. Um, and so you got to take into all that aspects, the academics, the social, the soccer aspect, and then the financial. Coach Ray? I think it's important when you start out the process here, you <coughs> ask the big net to start out with. You have to, you know, it's all great to have ideas. I want to go to this school and that school, but you need to have a wide net when you first start and then narrow it down as, as time comes along. And one of the main things I will recommend to everybody is be flexible. Don't be just narrow minded. You have to have, you got to put your schools and priorities, put them in groupings that you feel that are good for you. 
uh, as everyone's made fantastic points on this thing, it's got to be flexible because what's our, the ultimate goals is that we want kids to be happy where they go to school at. And I can't just go like Mark said for one thing or the other. It has to be a good, good combination. You know, like I said, I, I recommend everybody be flexible and, and keep their horizons broad and then narrow down as we, as we get farther along the process. You? Um, trust in our system. That's important. I mean, you know, we, we already asked the question. Um, we've been through it. We've done it. We've, we've, we've circled the wagons with it. Um, we've got great experience here. Um, and then obviously the last thing I would say, be accountable for your development. Uh, it's important. I mean, I think you, you can't depend on the club to develop you. You have to be accountable for it. We can only create the, create the atmosphere and so forth. But at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, this is what I really want. Because going off to school, it's, it's, it's a four-year commitment. It's a huge commitment. It's a life changer. And it's important that you become, a, become an adult and realize that you're accountable for your, for your development, and your, your decisions that you make moving. And obviously, um, you know, nothing wrong with put yourself in situations where you're going to fail. I mean, because that's going to happen in college. So it's important that you, you know, you, you, you trust our system because our system will put you in some tough situations that you will, you will feel and you got to figure out how to get out of that failure. So it's important to be open mind to all those things and trust in the system. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. I know um, I took a little bit of your night and, and I appreciate um, the time you've given me. Hopefully, guys, you, you enjoy the Q&A. We do this with the intention of giving you as much as information as we can. And, um, you know, this is for you. This is for those players that are looking for options. Uh, this concludes the Q&A. Uh, hopefully, we'll continue to go this. Actually, we hopefully we'll be able to be in the field and then um, actually do these questions um, with our coaches and, you know, play soccer the way we know how to do. It. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope you guys enjoy every single chapter. Um, thanks again for watching us. Thanks again for supporting us. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy.